Good morning once again. Today we're going to continue our discussion on panel data regression. We have discussed that panel data is uh, oftentimes used in many in many analyses in finance and economics because of the nature of the data. We discussed the difference between a cross-sectional data and the time series data and a panel data. When you have a cross-sectional data, you have uh, a snapshot of uh, data about uh, several units, okay? Like, uh, for example, several countries or several companies, several uh, units of, uh, uh, can be cities, it can be individuals, and you're looking at the attributes or qualities of that unit at one point in time. Uh, for example, if you're looking at GDP, GNP, macroeconomic data, uh, employment rate, inflation rate, etc., of several countries in 2021, for example. That's an example of a cross-sectional data. Okay. On the other hand, a panel data looks at one unit, okay, one country, one individual, taken across several points in time. For example, Philippines. Uh, the object, the focus is on Philippines, and then you're looking at it across several points in time. You're looking at GDP, GNP, unemployment rate, birth rate, mortality rate, etc., from 1970 up to 2021. That's an example of a time series data. Okay, so one unit lang, one individual, uh, taken across several points in time. That's a time series data. On the other hand, a combination of a cross-sectional data and a time series data is called a panel data. No? Panel siya. So, for example, you're taking a look at ASEAN, okay, and then you're taking a look at uh, the different macroeconomic variables for ASEAN, so several countries shown in 2010, and then also in 2020, uh, 2010, 2011, up to 2022, for example. That's a panel data, panel data, okay? So I hope that's clear, Lars. No? Uh, and uh, it's very important to know how to distinguish between, between these three uh, types of data, okay? So sabi natin, this is one of the most popular, no? popular econometrics method. Okay, and we want to model this, okay? Uh, as I said also, there are two types. We have a pal balanced panel and unbalanced panel. Pag balanced panel, uh, the same individuals can be seen all throughout the uh, time frame, all throughout the years. Uh, as I said, yung example natin kanina, ASEAN, uh, ASEAN 5, for example lang, 2010, andun present sila 2011, 2012, 2013, hanggang 2022. ASEAN 5 data kasama. That's, that's called a balanced panel. Pag unbalanced panel, pwedeng may mga pumapasok na ibang data at may lumalabas. No? So that's what we call an unbalanced panel. Okay, so we started with this. We, we are looking at the rental data set that, that comes with the uh, Woolridge package. No? So First, we loaded the paki load na to, class. This is one way of loading your packages. So shortcut na siya, no? andun na yung, yung library at saka yung, yung in, pag-install ng package. No? So ang sinasabi dito, kung hindi natin ma-library ma siya, okay, sabi dito, no? uh, these are your package names. No? It consists of this, PLM, NITR, etc. Okay, and then this is the code for i in package names ibig sabihin titingnan niya isa-isa yan no if not require okay ibig sabihin kung it will try to run to require to to load it first library to no library okay ilo-load niya si library no character only ibig sabihin naka-quotes no yung character lang niya kung hindi niya ma-load ibig sabihin wala pa yung ano it's still not uh, the, the package is not still existing dun sa machine natin. So sabi dito, install natin siya. 
Okay? And then after installing, it will go here. Saka i-require. Okay? So yung first command dito, no? Uh, yung yung require. Kung hindi siya, kung hindi niya kayang ma-require, no? Kung hindi niya kayang ma-require, ibig sabihin, as I said, hindi pa maka-install yung package. Install niya muna. And then after i-install, saka na i-require. Okay, so that will uh, that will run together any package that has not been you know, that has not been installed. Okay, sometimes magkaka problema dito kasi may mga package means na either hindi pa naka-install sa sa ano sa CRAN, no, yung comprehensive R archive network or uh, and sometimes kailangan pupunta ka dun sa yung repository ng package niyan. So may mga ganun, no? May mga ganun package and what are those packages? Pag nagsabi siya na hindi siya ma-install, uh, the next thing to do is to search no? sa, sa Google, for example, kung saan, saan pwede ma-install, saan pwede makuha yung package. Yun. And usually naman nakalagay sa, ano, either yung author, dinalagay niya dun sa GitHub niya. Okay. So, as pointed out, we're going to use the rental data. So, Na, na install ko na siya, na run ko na siya. So kindly run it again, guys. Okay. So I won't run it anymore. Dito na siya, no? Okay, so you have here a total of 23 variables. Maraming variables siya with 128 entries. Okay. So let's take a look at the structure of this data. Okay. On the first column, you have city. So this is the individual, this is the unit. And the second column, you have the year. When you're preparing data, panel data, it's good for the first and the second. It's good for the first, yung unit, yung individual, tapos yung second, yung year. Okay? And then, merong ano, no? merong, there are different ways to, to go about this. Okay? So, uh, ilang years, ilang years to dalawa, di ba? 80, 90. Tapos ilang units to? Ilang individuals. So you can see here, 64 different individuals. Okay? So you have 64 cities and then two years, 80, 90. And then the data is sorted, uh, sorted siya by city. Yeah, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Okay? Now be aware of this kasi pag ganito yung pag-arrange ng data, okay, uh, pwede natin na uh, uh, either use the p that data uh, code to make this into a uh, to make this into a panel data, or you can uh, you can use another another way, no? uh, which I'm going to show you in a while. Now let's see first kung ano yung class class ni rental. Uh, okay, so it's a data frame, no? Or we can use the structure, str, and the rental, okay, to tell us kung anong classing, uh, anong classing data set to. So as the name suggests, this is a, okay, tinan natin, this is a data frame, okay? CT is an integer, year is an integer, okay? So we don't want that, ang gusto natin, si CT at saka si year, uh, this will be the index. No? Gusto natin yung index tong city at saka year na to. And so we have to convert it into a panel data. Okay. So let's continue. Any questions so far, class? Uh, I, I'm, I'm deciding to really, ano, really uh, spend some more time. Kaya nga uh, next week, panel data pa rin tayo. Magkakaroon tayo ng iba examples. Because I really want us to to really be familiar and let's say to be more to understand more yung panel data. So so Friday next week we'll have uh, we'll have more examples about uh, panel data. So because I don't think we'll be able to finish all of this. It's okay. Because uh, from ano eh, uh, talagang gamit na gamit to, guys. Pag mag ano na kayo, pag mag thesis na kayo, thesis either thesis one or thesis two. And you will, uh, there's a big, big chance no? that you'll be using panel data and even panel data regression. Okay. 
Alright, so uh, dito pinakita lang kung ano yung mga variables natin. Let me just so here you have population, okay, enroll, rent, uh, okay, total. Hindi ko kabisado, no? But uh, especially if you're getting your data from a package, it, it's easy to get the metadata. Puri natin metadata nito, which we did already last time, but doesn't hurt to review, no? So rental data. Okay, ayaw niya uh, dalawa. No? Minsan ayaw ng pag-package, dapat dalawa. And sometimes, pag isang question mark lang on a data set, okay siya. Minsan, pag, minsan ayaw. No? So dapat dalawa. So you just have to explore. Okay. Uh, ayaw dito. So pupunta na lang ako dito kay Woldridge. Nasa packages. Woldridge. Tignan natin si rental. Yan, rental. Okay, maraming, maraming data kay, ano eh, kay Woldridge. Yan, this is now the, the metadata, no? Metadata is information about the data. So you have city, yeah, 1 to 64 nga, year, 80 or 90. Uh, pop is population. Enroll is the number of college students enrolled. Okay, and then this one is average rent. This is renter occupied units. This is occupied housing units, okay, etc. So my information siya about the, the data. Tapos ito, dami bar, naka ano, no, yung year. 1 is equal to 1 if year 1990. So otherwise, pag 0, 1980. Yun. And if you take a look at this one, year 90, it's an integer also. Okay? So, uh, pwedeng gawing factor yan. Okay? But since it's binary, 0 or 1, uh, pag ganyan, pag 0 or 1 lang na integer, whether you, uh, whether you change it into a factor or not, it doesn't matter. No? Unless yung iba, kasi yung uh, well, before, when you're using a particular variable, uh, tapos binary siya 0 or 1, and you want it to be used as a factor, then you have to convert this into a factor. But I think yung LM package ni R ngayon, in-update na niya. No? So, pwede na kahit na hindi ginagawang as factor kapag binary. Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue. Okay, so ito, class yung ano, ito yung, yung pag-convert into, uh, into a panel data. So from the, this is from the PLM package. No? PLM to. Panel linear model. So we can use the p p -data frame. Okay, yung data natin is rental, and then we will index it. Index. Okay, C. So, iunahin natin yung unit, at saka uunahin natin yung year. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter kung nauuna yung city or year, no? kasi in-identify naman natin kung ano yung, yung una dapat sa C natin. Dito. Ang una dapat yung year, ah, yung, kung ano yung unit, tapos pangalawa yung ano, yung uh, yung uh, time. No? So it doesn't matter kung anong, ano, kung anong arrangement niya. Okay? Uh, this will matter only if you're using another way to convert to convert your data. Okay, so let's create this. Okay, nag-create tayo ng rental P. No? Rental P na object. Let's see below. So asa na si rental P? Ito, no? Rental P. Uh, if I view it, so exactly the same, but uh, if we get the structure now of rental underscore p, okay, it is now. So it's not only a, it's not only a data frame. 
okay? It's not only a data frame, it's now a uh, panel data. No? Panel data na siya, natin, na siya, no? uh, That's why when you look when you look at this data, yung rental P, you notice na may index na siya dito, di ba? Okay, iba siya kay rental. Si rental is an ordinary data frame. Tignan nyo yung index dito. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No? While here, yung rental P natin, okay, you notice guys, 1-80, 1-90, 2-80, 2-90. Ito na yung index. So the first number here will be the uh, the city. And the second number will be the year. Okay. So let me pause for a while and uh, uh, kindly chat please if you got it, if you understood it. Notice I'm being very deliberate about this. Huwag natin i-rush no? kasi napaka-importante ng panel data. I want us to really understand clearly. Kindly chat please if so far na intindihan yung distinction between rental and rental fee. Okay, good. And the rest. Okay, please feel free to uh, shoot your questions if you have any. Okay. All right. And let's move on. So clear na sa atin, ano? Uh, now, just to illustrate, uh, sabi ko kasi kanina, can you, there, is there another way also of uh, of uh, indexing it? Pwede ba natin i-index din siya kahit na hindi natin ginamit yung, ano, yung function na yun? Can we do it another way? Yes, we can do it another way, no? Uh, let me just illustrate that. So, para familiar tayo kung... Okay. So, bago natin gawin yung... Okay, let me just write, this, write it here. Okay, so let's create another rental underscore P1. I'll just call it P1 para to distinguish it from rental P. Alt. Okay. Alt minus. Okay. Uh, siguro dito ko nalang isulat eh. Let's write it here for record purposes, P1. Okay. So, kasi kanina, uh, uh, actually, pareho lang din naman, you know? Pero, pwede kasi na uh, we can still use the P data that frame. And then, same thing, rental. Tapos, we can just use index is equal to so yung index natin, if the data is arranged this way, yung sabi ko nga, naka, yung una yung yung unit, tapos pangalawa yung year, tapos naka-sort siya, sorted by the, ano, sorted by the unit. Kasi so, kunyari, uh, uh, if, the, uh, if ang lumalabas dito yung pangalan ng city mismo, tapos pag naka-sort yung city, ibig sabihin nun, mauuna muna, for example, uh, ano muna, Angela City, no? Lahat muna ng Angel City lalabas yan. And then, next, kunyari, Manila. So, Manila yung mga susunod lahat dyan. So, sorted siya by city. If your data is arranged that way, then, uh, pwede namang, hindi nyo sasabihin na yung city at saka yung year. No? Pwede namang sabihin natin, index is equal to index is equal to so, ilang bang, ano, ilang cities? Uh, di ba 64? No? Yeah, 64. So you can write it this way. Index is equal to 64. Then R will understand, ah, okay, index is equal to 64. Yung ano to, yung number of cities. Yung number of cities. Okay? So this can be done if, no, if your data is arranged in such a way na naka-sort yung city. Naka-sort yung unit. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so meron na tayong rental P1 dito. No? And same thing if I check. 
O class na lang, no? Class. Class ni rental P1. Okay. Notice now that rental P1 is also a panel data. Okay. So, two ways to uh, to convert your data into panel data. Okay. This, this can be done class if your data is arranged in such a way that na yung ano natin, yung city natin na uuna, yung unit, and then it's sorted. If it's not sorted, then you cannot uh, mag magkakamali tayo. So just be careful. Okay, once again, let me pause and uh, please kindly chat if uh, if the other way to index. No? Kasi baka makakita kayo ng ganito sa when you're doing some research or uh, when you're trying to look at some codes and then you're surprised, bakit dito index is equal to 64? Eh, ang alam ko pag index dapat concatenate natin yung variable ng unit at saka variable ng, ng year. Okay? And then dapat dito, dapat first first column should be the unit uh, and unit is sorted. Yeah, yun yung condition para para mag-work ton. First column should be the unit in this case, yung unit natin yung city and, and is sorted. All right. So, uh, okay, let's move on. Kasi after yung nagawa na natin ito dati, no? but I, kasi hindi tayo nakapag ano last, last time. So, I want us to review this. And then here, we're just creating an object. No? called kips so that when we when we run the regression uh ito na yung ilalagay natin no okay kips is a combination of yung log rent yung da, yung binary variable na y90 log population log ng average income and percentage ng students no? okay so let's create this object kips and then uh, what what's happening here? Okay, we're creating this object rental view, and then it's coming from rental P. Okay, and then a subset natin si si Kips. Okay, so let's run this. Let's run this both to see ano yung laman ng rental view. Okay. So, ang laman ni rental view is, okay, di ba si rental, si rental P, this is panel data already, di ba? So, notice that the index appears here. Kasi si rental view is just a subset of rental P. And then, what what you find here are the six variables. Si L rent, si bali lima, lima pala, limang variables, one, two, three, four, five, there. Okay, so as I said, this is just a quick review. Okay, clear so far, class? Okay, chat, please. Okay, I'll be asking this question uh, as we go along. Okay, yung iba? Okay, thank you. Although I'm not, I'm not getting 100% response. Eh? Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's move on. Okay, we know this already. Yung data set natin, okay, from 64 different cities at two different years. Okay, log rent. Okay, Y90 is the binary variable referring to pag 1 siya 90. Okay, otherwise, if you 80, 0. Log of average income and then percentage of student population. Okay, so summary, okay, uh, let's not do that anymore. Okay, now, when we deal with panel data, uh, we learned last time that there are three ways to do it. Number one, yung ordinary lang, yung OLS. Ibig sabihin nun, we're, we're going to discount yung panel data structure niya. 
Okay? Uh, parang ang gagawin natin, gagawin natin siyang cross-sectional data lang. Regardless of the uh, units, the repetition of the units and the time, okay? parang it's just like we will not consider them. Tanggalin lang natin siya, tapos yung data natin, parang ano lang, parang cross-sectional data. Kasi we're not going to consider the the uh, unit itself and the time, time component. So ibig sabihin, disregard the, the the fact that this is a panel data. So that's what happens when you do yung OLS, aka pooled method ton. Pooled. Okay, so it's also called pooled model, okay, it, it, which means that we, just, we disregard. It's the attribute of the data being a panel data. We are ignoring the panel structure. Okay, and sometimes it might be uh, it might be okay to do that. Sometimes mas lumalabas nga na ano na mas maganda na lang yung pool, no? especially when the error terms, the residuals are almost kidastic and not if the error terms are not if they're not autocorrelated no? and the residuals are homo kidastic. So bakit ka pa magpapanel data kung okay naman yung OLS? Okay, so usually that's what we do. We first check kung okay yung ano, if okay yung OLS. No? Okay, so let's do this. All right. So we're using we're just using the LM function. Di natin gagamitin si PLM, yung panel linear model. So we're we are regressing rent log rent on uh, the uh, year population average income and percentage students <clears throat> and we're using the rental data the uh, the uh, data frame okay bakit natin ginagamit to hindi naman natin kailangan yung panel data eh, no? okay so let's run this okay so we have this output which we discussed already last time so quickly lang to no? so ano ibig sabihin ng 0.26227 na to Can anyone tell me how do how do we interpret this? By now, class, we should be able to know how to interpret this. Class, anyone? How do you interpret the point two six point twenty six na to? So nineteen ninety. Class? Hello? Anyone uh, can unmute yourself. What's the meaning of 0.26227? Okay, siguro, I'll give you a clue. Huh? I'll give you a clue. Let's, let's run this, control C. Siguro with this example, Okay, I'm going to call this OLS1. Okay, and then this one. Remember, year 1990 can be considered as a factor. Diba? Classifier yan kung 1990 data or 1980. So let me, let me include there. Okay. So convert. Convert si, you know, si... Convert C year 1990 as a factor. Okay, so let's run this. Control Enter. So meron tayong OLS1 and then summary natin. Summary OLS1. Okay, what do you have? Okay, lakihan ko ulit ha, para... Sa isang line din siya. Okay. Alright. Yan. So what happened, class? Was the output the same? Pachat naman, please. 
first question was the output the same as the other one where do we did not convert y90 as a factor same output ba class okay chat please in particular pay attention to the factor the y90 pareho lang balumabas hello class waiting for your response Yung iba, guys, dadalawa pa lang sumasagot. Did we get the same result? Uh, just compare yung y, yung, yung y90. Okay, yes. Okay. Alright, so now, how do you interpret this? Point 0.26. Yung, yun yung clue ko sa inyo, no? Factor siya, therefore, how do you interpret yung Y90? Anyone? Yes, thank you, Sophia. Kindly share your answer to everyone, please. Okay, so remember, pag factor, guys, diba bin a benchmark natin yan, diba? Correct? So, uh, sa natin ibe benchmark si ano? Si 1990. Kay 1980, So since one C19, uh, since one C19, I don't know, 1990, what does that mean? So on the average, the rental for year 1990 is higher than year 1980 by 0.26. Okay, so higher shall by point by 0.26. So that's how you interpret. Wag nyo kakalimutan, guys, ha, yung interpretation ng nakapag factor siya. So it's always benchmark against the uh, the reference, no? The reference natin. Okay, so let's move on. No? So here, what we did was to uh, generate this uh, generate this OLS. Okay, let's let me take a look again at this one. So significant C. Uh, si year 90, average income and percentage of students all, all were contributory to the rental. No? Si population, log pop, si population, significant lang siya at the 10% level. The rest were significant at the uh, point, uh, point 0.1%, point zero zero 0.001. Okay. So we can also use the uh, PLM package no? if we're going to use, if we're going to do OLS. And let's call it pooled. Okay, so here we're using PLM. Uh, PLM and then uh, if, okay, Dito. Let me copy this. Okay. Here we're still using the same data. Rental pa rin. No? So that's why we needed to convert it into a uh, panel data. Kasi we're using panel linear model data. But what's important here is that we have to include this. Pag nag PPLM tayo, we need to identify anong method ang ginagamit. No? So pooling. Pooling to. But even if we in inserted this index, still, actually, hindi, uh, hindi siya magagamit. No? Kasi, pooling naman to eh. 
Okay? Pulling naman siya, ibig siya yun, pag-pulling, of no consequence yung, ano, yung, yung component natin ng unit at saka ng time. But nevertheless, let's run this. Let's run this. Okay? And we get the same results. No? Pareho lang siya. Okay. The uh, adjusted R squared is still 86, around 86%, which is the same as this one. 86% din adjusted R squared natin. Tapos yung mga parameters natin, parehong pareho din. Yung significance, parehong pareho din. It, it's, it's exactly the same. No? Only that we use the we use the PLM. In fact, let's let's try this. Since P, since ano naman to pooling, kailangan pa bang ilagay tong index na to? What if I remove this? No? What if I remove the index and still use the rental data set, which is a data frame? Di ba? Hindi panel data frame kung rental na to. Okay? So let's, I'll call it pooled one just to preserve tong pooled na to. And let's run this. Okay, and what do you have? Diba? Still the same. Still the same output. Even if we use the PLM, okay, and when and then we uh, we defined it to be pooling. So pag sinabing pooled method yan, alam natin na ah, OLS yan. Okay? OLS yan. In fact, here, we did not put the, you know, we did not put the the uh, index dito, no? Or, another way, guys, just to, uh, just to control the, okay, pull three. PLM, tapos yung then, yung, re, ano natin, rental, rental P. Okay? So, ang ginamit natin na data dito is rental P. Si rental P, di ba ito na yung panel data, no? Okay, so panel data na siya. Na-define na natin kung ano yung unit at saka yung year. So there's no need to uh, put the index here. No? Hindi na kailangan uh, ito. Index yan. So let's run this. Okay, ganun din. Same. Alright, so just be aware of that. Now you can use PLM. Okay. And even if you're using a panel data, but if the model is equal to pooling, of no consequence na yung, ano, yung panel structure. Parang i-set aside din kasi pooling siya, OLS. So automatically, R will just ignore that. Okay, ignore that and then just uh, ignore that panel data structure and then consider that, that as a cross-sectional unit. Okay, so this is just uh, to present the output in a neat form, use the use of stargazer. So it's a model natin, no? Okay, you have to define type is equal to text. Okay, so these are the outputs. And uh, this is uh, more on APA format. Okay. All right, so and then yung uh, parameters, and then standard errors, yung nasa ilalim niya. Tapos, and then yung Number of observations, adjusted R squared, yung F stat natin, okay, significant at 0 0.001. This is the F stat, degree of freedom 1, degree of freedom 2, di ba? And then yung notation kung, uh, kung 1 star. Uh, dito sa stargazer, pag 1 star kasi, ano, 0.1 siya. So, dapat medyo i, i ano natin to, i, medyo babaguhin. Kaya nga nag 1 star tong ano eh tung uh, log population iba yung log population sa taas hindi si significant significant siya at the 10% level na so, here no? pero dito sa stargazer ginawa pa rin siyang one star kasi nga yung one star ginawa niya uh, yung one star is now 0.1 okay so we have to adjust this if we if we want the printout to be consistent, no? So dapat ah uh, kasi dapat ika copy mo na natin ito paste natin sa word file bago natin may edit. Okay. Now ito ah uh, co-plotting. Maganda sana to kung ano kung siguro ah uh, we'll have another example next time where we're going to use this 
Tapos ipa-plot natin na konti lang yung mga units. No? Kasi ito 64. Eh. So even if we run this, pag 64, hindi siya masyadong kita. No? Kasi, tinan nyo, it, it's a plot of the 64 cities. So, uh, may overlapping. Okay, this is this this is a good way to plot and see the difference between your the cities in terms of yung rental nila if if the units are not that many kaso sa atin 64 units so uh, ang hirap niya ma, ano, makita no kasi may mga overlapping na sa dami ba naman ng units so if you're just looking at ASEAN 5 for example ang ganda nito no kasi lilima lang yung data natin makikita natin yung differences among the ICN5, for example. Okay? Alright, any questions about this? So, uh, this is uh, a very good data, a very good way to plot coming from the foreign package. Okay. Any questions so far, class? Good. Okay. Thank you. Yung iba, please. Pa, ano naman? Pa, pa confirm kung clear. Okay. Thank you. Hindi ako nakakakuha ng 100% na ano, na participation from the class. Okay. Thank you. All right. Salamat, ha? I appreciate the responses from, from your end kasi gusto ko malaman kung uh, ano sa akin yun, feedback sa akin yun, no? Okay. So here, class, sinecheck sin natin kung okay ba yung ano, no? okay yung OLS. No? There are different ways to check for OLS. But this is the basic one. Kasi sabi natin, OLS will be okay if the residuals are homoscedastic. Okay? Kung homoscedastic naman, tsaka walang serial autocorrelation. Okay, why go for the uh, other method, yung fixed effects at tsaka yung, ano, yung random effects? If okay na yung OLS, then so be it. No? So what we're going to do here is we're going to create this object res. And it's the residuals. Remember, class? Naalala nyo to names, a dollar sign, OLS. This will tell us kung ano yung mga... Oops, sorry. Ano nangyari? OLS. May OLS na ba ako dito? Ito naman. List. Ay. Mali. Names. Sorry ha. Names OLS. Ba't ko nga ba dollar yung ginawa ko? Okay. There. Right. Okay. Here. So you have what's inside the OLS object. Yung regression model natin using uh, OLS. Ito siya. No? Uh, kasama din yung residuals so we can we can get the residuals of OLS so let's create this object called res and then it's from the residuals of OLS run natin and then also yung y hat no? yung fitted values ni OLS and then i-plot natin okay uh, sa x axis yung percentage of students no Okay, so x-axis to, sa rental yung percentage of students. Sa so y-axis yung residuals. So, okay, and then, enable natin. Alright. Tapos dito naman, sa isang plot, uh, yung fitted value natin on the x-axis and the residuals on the y-axis. Okay, so two plots here. Let's plot both. Para makita lang natin yung yung behavior ng residuals natin. Okay, so for the first one, what we're plotting is percentage of students. No? So, okay. Alright, so uh, hindi siya, hindi masyadong apparent, ano, but I see, I, I see here some clustering of the date, of the residuals dito. No? Nagka-cluster yung residuals dito sa sa level ng dito sa percentage of students dito. Makikita natin yung cluster ng residuals more in this case sa dito. No? 
So ibig sabihin dito sa uh, in the in the area where the percentage of students in a certain city is very high. Okay, ibig sabihin mas maraming students kaysa residents dun sa city na yun, mas konti lang residuals natin. So dun sa area na maliit lang yung student population, percentage ng student population, malaki yung mga maraming residuals. Yun. Okay. So also dito, dito naman yung Y hat natin treated values. You can see clustering. Clustering ng mga ano, no? Clustering ng Hindi siya ano, hindi siya randomly distributed. Okay, that's what I meant, no? May clustering ng residuals. And this is not good. No? This indicates that th there is heteroscedasticity here. Okay, the spread of the data points uh, ensures that there is a heteroscedasticity as far as the residuals is concerned. Okay, of course we can test, no? Statistically using the Bruce Pagan test. All right. Okay, now we're going to go into the fixed effects model. Okay, uh, later on we'll test. No? We'll test kung, kung okay ba si OLS as compared to fixed effects. Okay, what happens with the fixed effects model? Ano nangyayari sa fixed effects model? Okay, the, the theory is very important. No? Yung, sa appreciation, sa understanding of fixed effects. Uh, I'm sorry, hindi ko nabigay yung isang file ko na andun dapat yung equation. Kasi gusto ko i-explain sa inyo yung equation ng fixed effects. But let's do that next next meeting na lang. No? So sa fixed effects, uh, let, let's uh, go through this. No? The fixed effects model assumes that variation within a cross-section, which could be due to the inherent characteristics of that entity. Uh, okay, so di ata complete yung sentence sentence ko dito. So, anong nangyari dito? May mga attributes yung bawat city na different from the other cities. So, kunyari city number 1. Kunyari the context ng US to, no? Kunyari si ang city diyan kunyari si Manila. So, si Manila may attribute siya. Okay? Which is different from other cities. Example, land area. Okay, assuming na hindi nag expand yung land area ni Manila. Yung what's the nature of that land area? Can you tell me, guys? Yung attribute niya na land area is what? Is It is what? It is different from the other cities, no? Inherent siya kay Manila. So yung land area ng Manila is different from Quezon City. Yung kay Quezon City different from Makati, etc. Alright? And also, it is what? Time invariant. Ito, ito yung ano ha? Ito yung importante ito. Time invariant. So number one, inherent siya dun sa ano? Inherent siya dun sa city na yun. Okay? Unique siya sa city na yun. Yan. Inherent characteristic of that entity. Okay? Tapos, pangalawa, time invariant siya. Ibig sabihin, yung land area noong 19, in 2010 is the same as 2021, uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, etc. Okay, so time invariant siya. Okay, now, if we don't put that in our model, if we don't put that in our model, yung magiging result natin uh, might be ano, biased. No? Magiging biased. So, uh, what I'm giving, ay, example na binibigay ko is, uh, alam natin yung, yung land area na yun. Pero, what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that, yung attribute na unobserved, hindi natin alam. Ibig sabihin, may mga factors na hindi natin alam, hindi, hindi observed, na quality yan ng city na wala dun sa iba, na unique sa bawat city. Tapos time invariant. Okay? Tapos hindi natin alam yun, yung attribute niya. We don't know that attribute. So if we if that attribute is not included in the model, then magiging bias yung model natin. Okay, so the fixed effect model will address that. 
So mathematically, I'll just show it next time in the interest of time. Para makita natin. Okay. Uh, so kunyari, no? Sige, ayun natin dito. Y, I, T is equal to beta null. Ito yung model natin. Plus beta 1 times uh, X1 IT plus beta 2 X2 IT plus beta plus beta 3 times X3 uh, X3 IT A plus A sub I plus a certain error term no? E, uh, EIT. Okay. Okay, take a look at this model, guys. Ang hirap niyo navigate dito sa ano. Ito ko nga ilang ilagay niyo. I'm sorry about this. Okay, I'll take a look at this equation. So, uh, notice, guys, yung panel data natin, sub i at saka sub t. Ano ibig sabihin tong sub i at saka sub t? i refers to the unit and t refers to the year. So, dalawa yung, yung, uh, yung subscript natin dyan, no? Uh, this is the intercept. This is the, uh, the this is the parameter for the first variable, x1. It in first regressor natin, uh, and then sub it then. No? Okay, it. So this is for the first uh, for the uh, city, and time is for either 1990 or 1980. And then it is what I said to you, no? So there, there's this presence of this A sub I. This is the attribute of a particular CT. Okay? So if you're talking of Manila, constant to sa lahat ng, sa lahat ng observations from Manila. No? And then it does not vary over time. Wala siyang sub T. Okay, take note. No? Wala siyang sub T. A sub I lang siya. A sub I here indicate that it varies across uh, the uh, different cities. But there's no T, okay, which means that this is time invariant. All right. So when we, uh, when, uh, when we have this model, and then this is unobserved, no? Ibig sabihin, hindi natin alam to. Okay, so what will now happen kung hindi natin alam to? If this is an unobserved variable, ibig sabihin yung mga characteristics ng bawat city na hindi natin na isasama dun sa model natin. Okay, when we run the model, magiging bias yung model natin. It will no longer be the best linear unbiased estimator. So how do we address this? Okay, ang ginagawa sa fixed effect model, ang ginagawa niya, kukunin yung ano, kukunin yung mga average. Okay? Kukunin average per city, okay, per time. Tapos ima minus, ima minus sa bawat isa. So ito magiging y sub it minus the average of it. No? So lahat to magiging ang tawag yan magiging the mean. No? I'm I'm not discussing the ano the the process no sa uh, sa fixed effects. No? So we will take we will take time no, to really understand kung ano tong fixed effect model. Kasi ang nakikita kong weakness, kunyari sa, sa defense na, nagdi-defend like yung mga students, pag may tinatanong na sila about this, no, uh, 
hindi ma hindi ma hindi ma ano yung concept no? hindi mo shadow na explain yung concept uh, so uh, guys may I request you to please read read more on yung the difference talaga ng ano ng yung pool alam na natin yan yung OLS no yung fixed at saka random so sa fixed effect kasi anong nangyayari mina minus no mina minus yung mean okay now since AI which is unobserved syempre yung average yan will be the same so ipag pag i-minus mo rin yung average nito on itself magiging zero na to so what happens what happens is that this one is removed from the model. Okay, itong unobserved na attribute na to ng CT na importante na dapat masama dun na hindi natin ma-observe, hindi natin masama. So what happens is that this is removed. Mawawala na siya sa model. Okay? So since it's already removed, then that addresses the problem of this unobserved uh, unobserved inherent characteristic of the of the CT, no? which is time invariant. Okay, post muna ako. Kasi mukhang mahaba na itong sinabi ko. No? Uh, okay. Clear ba so far, class? Clear ba? Uh, I must confess that sa simula talaga medyo nakakalito talaga itong concept ng fixed effect model na ito. So I'll, I'll just, uh, uh, again, I'll repeat. No? Sa fixed effect model, actually hindi na Y sub IT yung pinaano natin, no? Ang ginagawa natin dyan, y sub it minus yung average niya. Average ng y sub it. No? Okay? So this is now what we call the de mean model. Tinanggal na yung mean. De, tinanggal. No? Bakit ginagawa yun? Bakit tinatanggal yung, ano, yung, yung average niya? Para mawala to, no? Okay, kasi kunyari, kukunin mo yung average ni Manila. Na? Okay? Eh, si Manila, hindi naman nagbabago yan over time. Diba? Kunyari, land area yan, 100. Okay? So, over time, okay, 100 pa rin yan. So, kung i-minus mo, 100 minus average ng 100, di ba magiging zero yan? Di ba? Right? Kasi if this does not change, 100, 100, 100, if you get the average of that, 100 pa rin. Tapos, ima-minus mo, 100 minus 100. Kasi lahat ima-minus natin eh. Kukunin natin averages nila. Tapos, ima-minus natin. So, this will cancel out. No? Mawawala ito. Okay? So, that's what happens when we have fixed effect model. Okay? So, minaminus natin yung, yung average kay ng bawat city ng bawat time. Okay, so for example, uh, let's see, punta tayo dito sa rental. No? Okay, so sa fi pag fix effect, what will happen? So what will happen sa fix effect? <clears throat> okay, so i-run na lang natin. No? I-run natin si fix effect para mas makita natin. All right. Okay, so dito, uh, so let's call it FE no? and then PLM. PLM and then ito pa rin regression model natin. We're using data, rental, P yung panel data natin. And then our model is, ito na yung difference. No? Kanina, pool. Okay, ito within. Pag within, fixed effect yan. Bakit within? Kasi minaminus natin within that, ano, within that uh, city, imaminus natin yung average niya. Okay, so yung average ni city 1, average ni city 2, average ni city 3, imaminus natin sa, sa mga observations. Okay, so let's run this. Summary FE. Alright, so what do we have now? Okay. <clears throat> log population, log average income, percentage students. Okay, ano nangyari dito?
what happened? Okay, by the way, guys, no, take a look at our model. How does our uh, fixed effect model compare with your OLS? Class. Are the parameters the same? Yung value niya, estimates niya? Hindi, di ba? ba iba yung values nitong fixed effects. No? Kasi you're actually working on a different model already. Yung si uh, pool, si OLS, same original data yon. No? Ito naman, <clears throat> uh, binabago na natin yung structure natin. Okay, what we're doing now is yung rent natin na yan, it's already the mean. No? Tinanggal na natin yung average yan. Okay, and so what happened? Log population turns out to be insignificant na siya, no? Ito. But the others are still significant. And if you take a look at the overall goodness of fit, okay, as an overall goodness of fit natin, oh, uh, okay, p-value is okay. Alright? And then, ang adjusted r-squared natin, tumaas. 0.95. Okay, overall significant siya, but sabi nga natin dito, the log population remains insignificant, just like in the OLS model. Okay. Alright, so, uh, natin dito. Okay, now, so ano nangyayari kapag, ano, kapag fixed effects, no? What happens is that we can now, kasi di ba sa pool, wala na yung ano eh. Uh, wala na yung, ano, wala na yung, uh, okay, wala na yung, we don't consider the panel structure anymore. So, ibig sabihin, wala nang distinction <clears throat> among the cities. Sa fixed effect, ano nangyayari? Di ba, uh, sa fixed effect, what happens is that, ano nangyayari sa fixed effects, guys? You are considering here the inherent characteristics of the different cities. Okay, so if we use this, okay, the code is fixed effects. No? Let me just remove this. Uh, marami, no? Saan ba siya? Kay Woodridge ba yung, ano, PLM? Hindi ko maalala. Maraming fix kasi, no? Fix F. Uh, I'm not sure if this is from PLM. Let me check. PLM ba? Fix. Ayan, PLM to. Okay. All right. Uh, so the fixed effect sa PLM function to extract the fixed effect from a PLM object associated with the summary method. Okay. So here, uh, FE yung model natin, di ba? Tingnan natin yung fixed effect. Okay. Take a look at this. Hmm. So what does this tell us, guys? 
ano itong mga to? Anyone? How many are there? <clears throat> Plus, how many are there? 64, di ba? Anong ibig sabihin ng 64 na yan? Class. <clears throat> what are those 64? So yung sa model natin, tingnan nyo, class, walang intercept, di ba? Okay, walang intercept dito. Bakit na wala ng intercept? Kasi each city will have its own intercept. Okay? Notice that the coefficients are now missing intercept as compared to the pool. Di ba sa pool, may isang intercept. Bakit? Kasi wala naman tayong cities na eh. Walang distinction. Ito, sa fixed effects, okay, we are now considering that each city is unique, each city is different. So that, sa model natin, ito, so for city 1, the slope is, the intercept is 1.3291. So the complete formula for, for city 1, for the model is, yung beta null natin, yung intercept is 1.3291 plus whatever these estimates are yung mga parameters sa ito. Okay, so you notice here that there are different intercepts for each of the 64 slopes. Those are the fixed effects ng model natin dun sa bawat individual city. Kaya nga fixed siya. No? So may fixed intercept tayo sa bawat city. Okay, that's why here it does not include an intercept. That's what I was asking a while ago. Anong difference? itong pull natin at saka fixed effect natin. Si fixed effect, hindi niya pinapakita ng intercept. Bakit? Kasi each city has its own unique unique uh, ano, unique intercept. No? Okay? Uh, yung intercept yan, ibig sabihin yung B, B null yan. Diba, guys? B null yan. B sub zero. Okay, pause muna ako. Is that clear, class? I hope clear yung pag-explain natin. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so, ang tanong, ha, mas maganda ba tong model na to kaysa ano? Dapat ba talaga na ano, na i-consider natin yung inherent characteristic ng bawat city? Yung mga time invariant na yan? Okay, so we can use the PF test, no? Okay, as, let's run this. Okay. So what does this tell us? Sa PF test na to, ano yung null hypothesis natin? Lagay nyo dito ang class. Eh? Okay, it's almost time. No? Null hypothesis. Okay, so yung null hypothesis natin dito is that yung fixed effect per unit or per city is not relevant, no? It's not significant. Let me choose this, not significant. AKA, pooled OLS is better. Oh, sorry, pooled OLS is better. Okay, and so we have this. All right, so dito, Ang sabi dito, alternative hypothesis, there are significant effects. No? Yun ang alternative hypothesis natin. So ang null hypothesis natin, walang significant effects. Yung mga in inherent na karakteristik ng bawat city. And the p-value is less than 0 .00, 0 0.005. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that there are no significant effects. Okay? Hence, the fixed effect model is better than the pooled, pooled OLS. No? So, mas maganda si, si, ano, si fixed effects. So, itype nga natin itong just a few hours. Uh, just one last minute, guys. No? Sorry. Ayan. So, ito yung ano natin. No? Uh, population is not significant. A year is significant. Average income and percentage of students is not is significant. P-value is uh, uh, 
R squared is 95%. Okay. Okay. So, uh, just to uh, emphasize this, yung random naman class, pareho lang yan ni, ano, ni fixed effects. Only that, hindi fix yung, yung impact ng mga attributes. Random lang siya. No? So, it assumes that this variation, yung, ano, yung, the random effects include the possibility of between entity variations. And it also assumes that this variation, yung differences among the different entities, is random. And they are uncorrelated with variables under study. Kasi yung kanina, yung A sub I natin, ang assumption natin nun, ano siya, yung correlated siya with the, with the other variables. Ito naman, may A, para may A sub I din, pero hindi siya correlated. So let's just quickly run this para tapusin lang natin to, no? Okay? Okay, so we have this output, no? Halos pareho din si log population nga lang significant din at point 10 parang pareho ng food. Okay? So you have also different ano, different parameters there. And then lastly, ito yung test natin. Is the fixed effect uh, better, no? than the random effects. No? Okay, so alam natin na fixed effect is better than the OLS, di ba? So ito naman, itatest natin kung si fix, sino mas maganda, si fix at saka si random. Ang gagamitin natin dyan si Hausman test, yung final Hausman test. Okay, so we run this. Okay. And then, ano sinasabi dito? Ano ba yung null hypothesis natin dito? Ang null hypothesis natin is that the fixed effect is better than the random effects. Okay, so p-value is 0 0.01. Ibig sabihin nun, we reject the null hypothesis that the fixed effect is better than the random effects model. Okay, ang best model natin is si random effects. Okay? Alright, so let me end there. Uh, sorry for the extension. Okay, so next meeting, we'll wrap this up. Huh? Paki, uh, paki ano lang, guys? Paki, konti na lang naman, please. Paki, uh, continue na lang para uh, para ano para tawag ito para tapusan natin to konti na lang naman siya tapos we'll just go through this very quickly next meeting all right so thank you very much guys i hope medyo na ma-reinforce ano natin understanding natin of course mag magkakaroon pa tayo ng more examples kasi kulang pa yan no uh, i want us to uh, 